Hello, I'm John Cook, co-founder of GeekWire, and on behalf of GeekWire Studios, I'm excited to be joined today by John May. He's the VP of Product at Carbon Robotics. John, we're here in an onion field in Eastern Oregon, and we have the auto tractor. Tell us what this new product is. So this is the Carbon Autonomy Kit. It's running on John Deere 6Rs, running laser weeders through this field. We're currently laser weeding all the uh, weeds in this onion field. So John, we just saw the auto tractor turn and now it's coming back towards us. Talk about the technology that allowed that to happen. When we're in the row, we're following the furrow, this little ditch here between the, the beds. We follow that with AI. Once it gets to the end of the field, it knows where it's at and that's exiting the field based on a geofence that is free map for the field. What happens if uh, the auto tractor hits a rock or it, it malfunctions in the field? What does the farmer do at that instance? Yeah, I would say if something happened like a lightning strike, damage the kit, we're gonna be out here within that next few hours and getting our back up and running. Support at Carbon is absolutely world class. We hear it time and time again from our, our customers in the laser reading space. We've built in trust with the growers that I think is a requirement for adopting autonomy. And we're really thankful to have that trust now. We're working with Carbon Robotics in their new autonomy program remote driving tractors to help minimize labor and increase efficiencies in our fields. So Brandon, one of the efficiencies you can gain here obviously is a labor efficiency. Can you talk a little bit about what that means for you here on the farm? It means a lot of things, you know, running the right speed, working 24 hours a day, seven days a week without having any sick time because tractors don't get sick. Um, we're hoping to mitigate some future expenses with labor rates by going autonomously on as many things as we can. And does this give you comfort that you can also have a human powered uh, component to this in the remote operations center, that there are actually people watching the tractors in real time, that if there were a problem in the field, they can get that, that tractor back up and running. How important is that to you? We don't farm on flat square fields. Um, we're in circles where pivots can move. We have hillsides, we have uneven turnarounds on the ends. There's rocky spots, there's wet spots. So having eyes on the tractor is really important to me. To just turn one loose and say, good luck, doesn't make me feel very good. So I really like what they're doing. It's autonomously driving with the supervisors. There's somebody watching that tractor at all times. So yes, it helps me sleep at night. What do you see going forward about other potential activations that could happen beyond just laser weeding here? Well, we do a lot more than just laser weeding. This is just one step in our operation. Trying to kill the weeds is an important step. So this is where we're, we've started. But there are so many things as we go through the year um, for marking out the ground before we plant to running bedders to prep the ground at, before we plant. And then after we've run the laser weeders and cultivated, we have harvest. So we have to layer onions out. We have to winter them. We, we dam or dike. There's a lot of things that we do where I can see a place for autonomous driving. The other advantage of that is instead of working, you know, a 10 hour shift, two and sometimes three trackers in the field for a 10 hour shift or 12 hour shift, I could probably run one or sometimes two autonomous tractors 24 hours a day and be more efficient with horsepower and with people. So with the auto tractor being released here in 2025, do you have plans this year that you're going to use uh, the device for more than just uh, weeding this year? Yeah, I don't plan on shutting them off when we're done with the laser weeding. <laughs> the plan is to, to keep, keep putting them in new situations uh, where we can test them and make them work in those situations so we can continue to grow our fleet of auto trackers. Right now we're running six R's, so that's kind of a, a size category, and we're in season. So this is one of the more difficult pieces of autonomy to do because you're in the field with the crop. You're not just running a disc or a chisel or whatever. So this could be used for running a smart sprayer or a smart cultivator or uh, something similar to that. And as VP of product and employee number one at Carbon Robotics, what gets you excited about this job? Spending as much time as I get to outdoors and talking to growers. Growers are just very straightforward and it's easy to get to the real answer. And what's next for you? I mean, you're kind of the innovation, the product guy. What would you like to see with Carbon Robotics in terms of how, how it evolves? Having autonomy is gonna open our eyes to different applications for smart implements. As we start operating tractors doing different operations, we're gonna learn about what things need to be optimized even further. The number one differentiator is gonna be the remote driving capabilities. So through satellite video stream, low latency, we're able to control the tractors very safely and we have full control over the tractors. So if there's an edge case, somebody parks the truck at the end of the row, or there's a wet spot in the field, we can solve that without requesting the customer to go out and fix it. Um, growers are gonna be super frustrated if they're having to constantly go and 
you know, tweak things in person. The point of this is to lighten their load. And so I think that's our biggest differentiating. Great. Well, John May, VP of Product at Carbon Robotics, thanks for joining us. Thank you.